welcome to the bustling resort that is Tembe in South Wales. This colourful seaside town is rich in history and legend. At this time of year, it's hugely popular with visitors and tourists. Some are here for a day out on the beach, a night out in the town, or just to pick up an ice cream along the seafront. The town has also become a major destination in the world of triathlon with one of the toughest, most unique and well-supported events in the calendar. Welcome to the Triathlon Guard Long Course Weekend. Yeah, it's an amazing atmosphere. It's a beautiful event, it's a beautiful place and that's why I keep coming back. It's just epic, isn't it? Pembrokeshire is famous for its world-class beaches, impressive castles and beautiful scenery. It might look pretty, but with it comes some brutal climbs. The legs and the lungs are certainly going to be burning for our competitors in the bike and the run. Let's get all the course details then from our commentator, Patrick Winterton. Completing three events in three days will win you four hard-earned medals. And like every triathlon, the long course weekend starts with a swim. The whale swim, twice round an arrowhead shaped course to make up the 2.4 miles. And with specialist swimmers like Tom Allen and Sophie Evans, the pace will be quick. Sub 45 minutes is possible. Day two is all about the bike. And as they take on the roads of Pembrokeshire, 112 miles of stunning, undulating scenery. The course profile looks more like an ECG readout. Their pulse rates will be closer to 212 than the 112, and hopefully they'll leave something for the final day. The marathon, big climbs at 3, 13, 19 and 22 miles. Only those doing their first marathon will get a PB here. But the harder the event, the more people want to do it, and even the celebs are here. Wales' record try scorer has turned his hand to triathlon. Shane Williams gets better every time he comes out. We've seen him race in Cardiff and Swansea, and now he's in Tenby. And this weekend, he'll be taking on the might of former international and teammate Ian Goff. Six foot five, 120 kilos. He's going to get down the hills fast enough. Has he got the willpower to get up them again? As with previous years, the weekend gets underway with the Taft Kids event, a run, splash, run. They'll be the first to get their medals, medals that will inspire some of them to become the next big names in triathlon. Even the Brownleys have to keep their eyes on those coming up through the ranks. Ollie Simon, local man, local hero, four-time winner of this event, and he's back again, hopefully for win number five. It is a really good event for me because obviously I can just come down to the beach this afternoon just for my daughter race and then I can have the swim straight home to bed. I don't have to worry about hotels, things like that. And then tomorrow the support I'll get going through the towns and things will be brilliant. It's an amazing atmosphere. That marathon finish as well, it, it is an awesome, inspiring. You see all the kids, they just love the event. Training's been going well. I've uh, been having some good results on the uh, half distances and things like that, so I've been uh, trying to stay sharp. I only raced last weekend, Sunday, so I've tried to keep sharp this week, ready for a bit of a longer test this weekend. He had an epic battle with Dominic Rohan Gates last year. Gates is back again, looks fit, not getting as much sleep as he's used to. My son was born nine months ago, so that's obviously created some some different complications. So I've been able to train, the numbers look good, but I haven't really been tested fresh. I'm hoping this year that I've found another level and if I don't, you know, if I don't, then I've still had a great time and I've still enjoyed what is a wonderful place and a very welcoming place. Just gotta go with it and see what happens because there's always there's gonna be more talent. There's always more talent it seems at this race. As the event gets bigger, the word spreads and it's starting to attract athletes from abroad. Top Swede Marcus Holtgren is here and he's certainly a man on the up. I like hard races. I did some hard races before like uh, Norsemen, pretty much similar, but of course the, the concept of three days uh, is, is very different. But I think, I mean, I, I, I do a lot of training, so I think the three day thing could be a, a thing for me. I'm definitely here for, for the win, or at least, at least uh, challenging uh, Oli, definitely. And as I said, it's gonna, I think it's gonna happen on the bike if it's happened.
North Beach here in Tempe provides a perfect setting for an open water swimming race. This is the stage, of course, for the first event of the weekend. It is the Zone 3 Wales Swim. The athletes are just testing the water behind me. There are two different distances on offer this evening, the 1.2 mile swim and a 2.4 mile race. Those doing the long course weekend, however, only have one option, and that's the greater distance. The wind turbines in the distance giving away the fact there's a little bit of breeze out there. There might be a few waves or ripples that might slow the times a little bit, but there are some class swimmers here. Lucy Charles, we've got Tom Allen, the Swansea crew are back again to show the rest of the world how to swim. This is one of the great swimming events of the year. A nervous procession down to the waterline. 2.4 miles, remember, for all those in the yellow caps. They're the men doing, and the women, of course, doing the long course weekend. Due off at 7 p.m. sharp. It will be a short night of rest and then back on the bikes tomorrow morning. Now, for those just doing the swim, they can go 100%. Those doing the long course weekend will need to pace themselves a little. Tactics will play a part. You want to find someone who swims just that little bit quicker than you and use their effort to your advantage. It's flat out at the start. Everyone looking for that little bit of space in the water. They'll break to their left, heading northeast on the first leg and then a sharp turn as they come back down towards Gosca Rock. Well, what a sight it is. The fireworks are going off. And by the time everyone is in the water, the race leaders will be a couple of hundred meters towards the first boy. The difference in speed. There's Ollie Simon in the middle of the picture. We'll no doubt see him. He's likely to be in the first five or six swimmers and he'll be looking for a time well under the 50-minute mark. There's a lot of tactics that come into play. The swims tonight, if that uh, turns out to be a 50-minute for the fastest guys, then I should be putting quite a bit of time in. But if it's a fast swim and we're over the low 40s, you never know with tides what that's going to do. Then we might be a bit closer and we might be a bit closer off the ramp in the morning. Well, big tides this weekend, so... You never quite know whether they're going to play to your advantage, but Ollie Simon should know better than most as a local man. Horseball Turner and Allen are the first two men out of the water. No real surprises there, but what a great battle in the women. Sophie Evans just ahead of Lucy Charles. Lucy Charles involved in the long course weekend. Down goes Evans. That will cost her a couple of seconds and push the pulse rate up. And then back in the water, round the same loop again. 1.2 miles completed. And out comes Ollie Simon. He's been swimming with Ben Elliott and Reese Barkley. Chorus Thomas is there as well. And no doubt Simon trying to use that group of three to help him round the course. Marcus Holgren of Sweden, out of the water. He's given away a couple of minutes already. I'm not a super strong swimmer, so that's always a little bit concern, you know, how much you're going to be after. And you lose all the, all the guys and you don't see them the whole day. But now it's... I mean, after the swim, I go home, have dinner, have a beer, and uh, reload for, for the cycling. Dominic Rowan Gates is another athlete who's usually playing catch up after the first phase. I know that they'll probably all be swimming faster than me. That's usually, that's usually the case in most races I do. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not too afraid of being behind people after the swim. Here comes Lucy Gossage, nice to see her again. She's working as an ambassador for the event, trying to inspire some of the athletes, trying to encourage them into this world of long-distance triathlon. What a performer she is. Well, at the sharp end, it's all about winning, but there are plenty of races going on within the race. Everyone's got someone they want to beat. Goff would love to beat Williams. Shane is like a little whippet and he's going, he's, he's worked hard. I couldn't catch him playing rugby either. I think I'm an all right swimmer, you know, and, and now I thought being a bit calmer might suit him a bit more, but I think in the times are roughly about the same. So if I can beat him at anything, I think this might be the thing I could maybe beat him at. So, but I'm not going to tell him that. I'm just going to go out and see if I can do it. My transition from playing rugby, you know, has been better because of things like this. You know, the enthusiasm of people around and it's just given me a massive goal and, and a little bit of intercompetition between the other retired players that have uh, they've gone through the same. Well, here's the action at the front of the race. Unbelievably, these guys swimming over twice as quick as those in the middle of the pack. 
Tom Allen, first out of the water. And his time is going to be under 47 minutes, so that's sub-20 minutes for each mile in the water. Allen takes the win. Andrew Horsfall turner who led at the turn, he comes in in second. Sophie Evans, the quickest of the women, 49.53. And Lucy Charles, what a swim from her. Just over the 50-minute mark. The first long course weekend athlete across the line. Under 25, 70.3 world champion. She's a class act. And she's beaten Ollie Simon out of the water. Ollie's certainly a couple of minutes slower than he was last year, but the conditions, the tides can make a lot of difference. Just wondering whether he's taken it just a little easier to save something for later on. Marcus Hultgren of Sweden. What will the margin be? Well, let's have a look at the results. And we're just hearing that both Lucy Charles, Rhys Barkley have pulled out. So these are the standings in the long course weekend. Ollie Simon on top, 54-20. His main rival, Marcus Hultgren, six minutes 13 behind. And Rowan Gates, not even in the top 10. He's over nine minutes adrift of Ollie Simon. It was really nice to be swimming with other guys for once. The last couple of years, I've been stuck out by myself. It made the time go a bit quicker. So on the way back in, we kind of split off and went for it. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was it was hard. But I was kind of inwardly smiling the whole way around, which is a bit bizarre. <laughs> really nice to say with uh, all the people and uh, the thing that you see people standing all over the place, so that's really nice. 17 swimmers going under the hour for the 2.4 miles. Ian Goff wasn't one of them, but he's done 1.19.40 and well ahead of Williams. I know I'm blowing, but that way I could have got any quicker. And they told me how flat it was, and I, for some reason, I thought I was all over the place. But, yeah, good fun. Very good, yeah, real good fun. That was, that was tough. I, mean, I did, it, did the Ironman last year, but uh, I forgot how tough it really is. You do the one lap, you could very easily sit back down and just watch everyone go. The swimming's hard enough, but you, you're competing against people who want to swim over the top of you. People who've got size 17 feet like him flapping in your face. And uh, it is tough, but I've done it and I'm, uh, you know, I'm glad I have now. I'm glad it's over with. It's a fantastic event anyway. It's just it's the length of the things you're going to be doing on this weekend. You know, 2.4 mile swim. God, last year I could only do about four lengths. We've got 112 mile bike tomorrow and then a nice little easy marathon on, uh, on Sunday. Thank God they spread it up two, three days. As soon as he said marathon, then I started trembling, thinking, oh, God, my first half marathon two weeks ago in Swansea, and now I'm staring down the face of a marathon now. After, I'm not even thinking about it. I've got to think about the 112 miles tomorrow. Well, most triathlon swims end with a dash to transition to get out on the bike, but not the long course weekend. These guys are welcomed by the huge crowds here on Tenby Beach before a short night's sleep, and then tomorrow it's 112 miles on the bike around the scenic but gruelling of Pembrokeshire roads. It would be uh, interesting to open the curtains to see what the weather's brought, but yeah, I am looking forward to getting going now after that swim. Really enjoyed that. Welcome back to the Triathlon Guard Long Course Weekend. It's a grey, drizzly Saturday morning here in Tenby, but it's time for our second stage, the Wales Sportive. This year, 3,000 riders will be heading out onto the picturesque but gruelling course. Here's Patrick Winterton with the details of the route. Just a couple of minutes before the start of the Cycle Guard Wales Sportive, they head west to Freshwater West to start the first of the big loops, and then there's a small one. They go through Saunders foot on two occasions and second time round that hill will appear near vertical. 9,000 feet of climbing. The rugby legends happy to stay out of the limelight. The weather won't bother them today, but 112 miles on a racing saddle might. Actually feeling okay, it was just hard to, like rugby, it was just hard to get to sleep last night with everything going through your mind being such a late start to the swim. But we're here now, I say the music's going, the weather's not with us, but you know, it was nice yesterday, so you can't have it all. I'm daunted by the hills, I think it's eight, nine thousand foot of climbing. It's going to be tough, although I've done a lot, still got the butterflies, still in a big group, and it's still time, so you know, I say that, good nerves though. Shane Williams, 10 minutes behind his friend and rival. Plenty of time to make it up. It'd be interesting. He's, you know, um, he is very fit. He's always been very physically fit and um, a mentally tough as well. He can push himself through the pain barrier. Uh, I'm hoping to have him on this one today. I don't know with the conditions and everything. We have to wait and see. But um, 
Hopefully he gets around safely and, and hopefully I'm in front of him. It's going to be 112 miles of pure pain probably. That's what triathlons are all about, I suppose. Over 7,000 athletes involved over the weekend and the top 10 both men and women getting to go off the ramp at the start. Ollie Simon sitting pretty at the top of the table. 54-20, his time in the water. Can he make it? Win number five here in Tenby. Minute intervals between those going off the ramp. Jill Cliff certainly looking for a win in the women's event. Tracy Markham might be her main rival, but Tracy has never done a marathon, so the final day could be a tough one for her. Marcus Hultgren, he's come all the way from Sweden and he's come to win. He certainly looks the part at the start of the sporty. And Ollie Simon, fastest in the water, last to go off the ramp. Yeah, the body feet really good. Uh, arms were a little bit tired last night, but usually a lot more tired, you know, cramping, things like that. But no, today feel perfect. So away goes Simon. Dominic Rowan Gates, slower in the water, gets to choose his start time. Tactics will play a major part here. Hopefully I can get in a group, maybe close the gap a little bit, but it's definitely a completely different scenario to the last two years where I've just been chased all day. So, yeah, it's all right. I mean, the main thing today is just to stay upright and get through. Um, but, yeah, it could be more interesting. So away goes Rowan Gates now. That margin is something like nine minutes, which is exactly the time he was behind Ollie Simon in the water. So that looks fairly obvious. Simon does not like to ride alone. It might be better if we work together rather than depart for five and a half hours, because obviously you've got to worry then about if there's anyone else here. We might have killed each other battling and then someone might come and take the crown off his coat. It can play out uh, a lot of different ways on the bike. If someone has a mechanical, I'm just hoping for the easiest possible day, the easiest possible outcome. I'd like to, that first 66 mile, just be comfortable, and then if I have to hit it hard on the last 46, then so be it. But I don't really want to be doing 112 by myself. Well, certainly the pace early on is fairly pedestrian for Ollie Simon. He's waiting for this man to catch him up, and then the two will work together. But I wonder whether they're showing too little respect for the Swede, Marcus Hultgren. What's your tactics today, Dom? Uh, try and catch Ollie. That's it. Well, that's fairly simple. But then they're going to have to think about trying to catch this man. And Hultgren, muscles bulging, is powering his way around this course. Has he pushed too hard too soon? Remember, the second half is really tough. Now on the swim, I always go full full throttle when I do my swim just to keep up with the guys. Uh, but on the bike, I go 75% or 80%. But now the cycling day is going to be my hardest 180k ride ever. And that's all due to the fact that his swim wasn't quite as quick as he would have liked it. No room for tactics for Hultgren. It's got to be 100% all the way. The man who's been training in Hawaii, Australia, New Zealand. Now, here's Ollie Simon, and you can see Dominic Rowan Gates in the background. He has almost closed that nine minute gap. Well, Dom, be happy to work with you. Ollie Simon, big smile on his face because at last he has got company. That's what he's been waiting for, but he's had to wait much longer than he thought simply because Rowan Gates started three or four minutes later than Ollie Simon was expecting him to. This means the two men are now level for the whole race. A similar situation to last year, but with one major difference. Holtgren is way ahead. He's pulled three or four minutes out of both these men, and the Swede is going for broke. I wonder how long Simon and Rowan Gates will work together. They'll have to share the lead. The more in the group, the better, provided they're moving fast enough. And here's Ian Goff. He's about to be lapped by Ollie Simon and Rowan Gates. Big legs pushing a small gear. Shane Williams, incidentally, is a long way ahead of Ian Goff. More than pulled back the time he lost in the water yesterday. You know, another attempt, feet, but I'm enjoying it. See a smile on my face. There's a buddy smile on my face, but. Plugging on. Get that toe real down for me. You're going to be going up by his mouth soon. Thank you. Still looking very fit at the age of 39.
Well, there's no doubt that this is one of the most scenic routes on the triathlon tour. Shane Williams seems to be enjoying it. A very good cyclist indeed. He's doing a lot of damage to the other competitors around him. Well, they'll be glad they weren't swimming today. The wind has picked up, the swell is enormous. Well, here are the two leading women in the long course weekend. Jill Cliff in front at the moment, but Tracy Markham in the black actually leading when you take into account her swim time and the fact that she started four minutes behind Cliff at the start of the bike ride. Smiling all the way round, an indication of how comfortable she is. How are you doing? Yeah, nice, really enjoying it, man. I'm it this morning and it's actually turned out amazingly well, so loving it. <laughs> Is she on her way to victory? Remember, she's never done a marathon, so tomorrow is going to be a big, big test. <laughs> Saunders' foot has a reputation for being tough. And just to make it worse, they have a time trial up the hill. The cycle guard hill climb. Ollie Simon won't be going for gold in that one. He needs to stay steady. Now trying to close the gap on Marcus Hultgren. He's lost the company of Dominic Rowan Gates. Not quite sure what's happened there. Rowan Gates working hard to catch Ollie Simon. But there is, of course, the possibility that he's had a technical of some sort. We'll find out later on. One of your into the granny gear. Well, there is uh, Rowan Gates. I think he was saying he's had a puncture. After all that, what happened? Puncture. Well, there you have it. A little bit of bad luck, and it has changed his fortunes. All that work to catch Ollie Simon thrown away. Now, Ollie Simon has no option but to go for broke. Can you catch him again? The way I'm feeling right now, I'm not sure. I'll keep going. Maybe those sleepless nights with his new son just taking the edge off his performance, but nothing he can do about the puncture. And it looks as though he's come out of race mode. And in fact, he's stopping again. So this could be a second puncture for Rowan Gates, which would probably indicate that he didn't clean out the tube first time round. This is just gone again. There's something stuck in the wheel. Disappointing. So Rowan Gates is out of the race. He won't have enough kit to uh, deal with another puncture. And after it was all going so well, he'd closed the gap on Simon. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we started, I was timed how, how far behind Ollie we were. And we went off eight minutes and 45 seconds or something. I think that was strategic. But we went off uh, so close that if I'd caught him, the gap would have been made up. So I'm not going to lie, I wasn't feeling great following him, but I would have, I would have stayed there. Oh, well. Still loving it, though. You can't win them all. And Ollie Simon's going to find it tough to win now. He needed the company of Rowan Gates to catch this man. Hultgren hasn't been messing around with tactics. He's been flat out since the start. He looks strong. He looks eager. And he wants this title badly. How are your legs, Ollie? All right, I didn't really want to be by myself, but... Well, what a contrast in the two race leaders. Hultgren now has put more time into Ollie Simon than he lost in the water yesterday. Here's Ollie Simon coming up behind Shane Williams, both on different laps, of course. Well, Williams is a good cyclist. Ollie Simon is a brilliant climber. That's where he gains so much of his time. But has he lost his opportunity? But don't forget, Ollie Simon is a very good runner. He's going to have to do something special tomorrow, as will Williams. How are you getting on? Not bad. 
20 miles to go, Rick. 20 long miles. You see if you get pace up. I hope I can keep it on 20. A few hills come in. Shane Williams getting plenty of support. And that's one of the features of this long course weekend. So many supporters out there creating an atmosphere that just gets those who are struggling up the next climb. Best thing about this bike ride, the last couple of miles is downhill into the town centre at Tembe. Ollie Simon, second time up, Saunders' foot still looking good. He hasn't given up on this one. And there have been some very impressive hill sprints indeed. Huge age ranges involved. And don't forget that you don't have to do the 112 miles. There's a 42 mile and a 66 mile race available as well. But for the long course weekend, it's all about 112 miles. Well, really good discipline from Marcus Hultgren, driving over the top of the hills, building the speed to absolute maximum. And he has put in a special bike ride today. The start system didn't go in his favor. He had to go for broke, and he's done just that. Yeah, that was <laughs> a hard day. The guys behind me can go on my time, but I had nothing to go on. I mean, I just need to take as much as possible. So it's kind of hard to go really hard, and you know, you don't know how fast they are. So you don't know if you're gonna push more or save something for, <laughs> for the run. Of course, you want to win, but after a swim, you wanted that even more, and then after a hard bike ride, you wanted even more. So we'll see when I wake up tomorrow and can't walk. <laughs> I probably don't want it, but uh, well, about uh, 15 kilometers into the run, I'm probably going to be really eager to get that one. He is hungry, and he's going to make Ollie Simon's life very difficult indeed. Simon not looking too happy with the way things have gone today really started to go wrong with his tactics early on, waiting for Rowan Gates. By my estimation, he's lost about 20 minutes on the bike. He was six and a half clear in the water yesterday, and that should make the margin about 13 minutes. It's going to be a tough run. The last lap, pretty much similar to last year, just um, solo effort, really hard. You know, with this weather, it was, um, it was tough going. I, Went through a couple of bad patches on the bike where I thought the legs are starting to really hit and then they came good towards the end. So I'm confident I can put a half decent marathon together. Yeah, the bike will definitely need a service after this, I think. <laughs> well, what an interesting situation we have. Marcus Holtgren from Stockholm in Sweden. Six hours, 18, 21 on the clock. He's 13 minutes, 11 seconds clear of Ollie Simon, the man who has won this event on four occasions. Rowan Gates is out of it. In the women's, Tracy Markham has had a stormer of a bike ride. She takes the lead in that event, and Jill Cliff now 23 minutes, 33 seconds behind. Cliff is a good marathon runner. Markham has never done one. It was. Uh, to be fair to, to the race, I was kind of dreading it this morning uh, with the weather and the, the wind. I thought, oh no, it's just not going to be a fun day out. And then got out there and I was this is, this is actually pretty good. Um, legs were feeling all right. I had a plan, stuck to the plan, and it seemed to have worked out. So that was good. Tempe is incredible. The race format is incredible. I wish there were more of them. I love it. So Sweden and South Africa holding the trump cards at the moment. Tomorrow will be interesting because I think it's possibly actually easier to just keep going and start the run than have a leg seize up and then try and run. But we love Tenby. We've, this is the fifth time we've been here and it's, um, yeah, it's fantastic. We absolutely love it. So we'll definitely be back. The fastest in the water have struggled a little bit today and Shane Williams has got his own back on Ian Goff. He beat me in the swim yesterday, so uh, hopefully he'll be one all today. He's a big lump, isn't he? So hopefully I can beat him on the run. We'll have to wait and see. He'll keep going. That's the only thing with Goffey. Uh, mentally tough. Perhaps more mentally tough than I am, so we'll see tomorrow. Ian Goff coming in towards the finish. He's over 7 hours 20, giving away almost an hour to Williams on the bike ride alone. The support out there was great considering the weather was so bad as well. So 
you know, good camaraderie on the road. Everyone enjoyed. Everyone stay safe. Great event, and you know, I, I think it's set Pembroke for life. I think you know, every time I come down here, there's people out running, there's people out, you know, being healthy on their bikes, and there's a buzz about the place, and it's you know, it's infectious. And he's going to need a huge amount of help tomorrow. It's his first ever marathon. From one half marathon about two weeks ago, so it's going to be painful. It's going to be absolutely painful, but. You know, I can't not do it now, so we'll have some fun. So it's all about a bit of, bit of spag ball recovery now and, you know, maybe a cheeky Peroni just to sort of, you know, just get the edge off and, uh, and get ready for it tomorrow. So two events down, one still to go and arguably the hardest to come. 26.2 miles of running. They'll be hoping for a little improvement in the weather. Well, it's been a hard day out on the bikes for our long course weekend athletes. It's a tough course anyway, but add in today's soggy and windy conditions. They'll certainly need a good night's sleep before the final stage, the 26.2 hilly miles in tomorrow's Wales Marathon. Hello, welcome back to Tenby and to the Triathlon Guard Long Course Weekend. It is Sunday morning and two and a half thousand athletes are ready to take on the Oakwood Wales Marathon. For 750 of these guys though, this is the final stage of the Long Course Weekend. And today they take on one of the toughest marathon courses out there. It is certainly not flat around here. Well, as they head out to the halfway stage at Pembroke, this course lulls you into a false sense of security. The first two and a half miles is downhill, but then you hit some very serious climbs indeed. And if you're going to hit the physiological wall, it's going to happen somewhere around Manor Beer. For the race leader, it's a question of whether he can get his legs working after his mammoth effort yesterday. This morning's they were, they were really hard, <laughs> really stiff, but uh, I'm always kind of slow starter in the morning. But uh, now it feels good. You and Ollie's personal best times over the marathon are identical, so um, 13 minutes should be enough, shouldn't it? Yes, if you're just running. But as I said before, if, if I got a cramp or if someone got a cramp, I mean, then the minutes run past very pretty quickly. So unless I'm not stopping, I think that should be enough. Ollie Simon, four-time winner of this event. He's looking for the elusive number five. How's he recovered after yesterday's efforts? Legs felt really good after I finished last night. They're a bit stiffer this morning, but it should be all right for the uh, first part of the race, so I'm hoping they'll get me up and down those hills. Yeah, well, I definitely know that second part of the course is harder than the first, so the trick is not to go off too hard because it always gets to you a bit on those last couple of climbs, so I'll definitely have that in the bank for knowledge, and then uh, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But at the end of the day, the strongest athlete's going to win, so good luck to Marcus. Surely he's not resigned to defeat quite yet. Tracy Markham, she holds all the cards in the women's race after a brilliant ride yesterday. Really, really nervous. Yeah, so it's my first ever marathon, so I'm quite scared. Hopefully I've kept enough in the tank to get to the end, but still quite a scary prospect. Going into uncharted territory, Tracy Markham. Jill Cliff is the lady who will be pushing her all the way to the line today. Some specialist runners in amongst the starters today. Remember, 750 athletes completing the full long course weekend. Well, certainly the best in the long course do not want to get caught up with those who are just running the marathon on fresh legs. And there are plenty of options today, a half marathon, a 10K, a 5K. Incidentally, Shane Williams deciding not to race today after his huge effort on the bike yesterday. His legs have not recovered. And that means if Ian Goff finishes the marathon today, his first, it will be 1-0 to Goff. The marathon is, and yeah, I've got up and did the Swansea half uh, a couple of weekends ago, and that's the, the furthest I've been. So actually doing a marathon this weekend, is sort of, it, feels, it feels me full of nerves. I've got game nerves on for a completely different event and completely out of my comfort zone, but, uh, but loving it. A steady pace in the pack, but it's fast and furious up front. Matthew Jones, number 3966, the doctor from Sunderland who won the whole marathon recently. He leads the way. We've got Richard Gardner there, number five, and Gareth Petz, 515, is only 16 minutes off the podium. Feeling a little bit heavy after yesterday. Uh, conditions were really tough on the course, but I've been doing a little bit more training this year on the bike, so hopefully I can run off it a little bit smoother. Amazing time of 2.40 last year. Are you looking to, to better that this year? Um, I'm not sure how things will go, but um, I'll be going for it. 
Now, it's worth pointing out that those with green numbers are just doing the marathon. Those with the yellow are on the long course weekend. And you can see Richie Gardner there sticking with the likes of Matthew Jones. Is that a wise decision? Gareth Petz has decided to drop back a little. How do you sort of set out the pacings? Do I take a gamble now? In one way, I've got nothing to lose, but then as a marathon runner, I know how hard it can be if you get it wrong, even if you're not competing for the front, just to get round, you know? This is still, as a marathon runner all my life, this is the hardest event, no if so buts. Chuck a 112-mile bike ride and a two-and-a-half-mile swim over the weekend on top of it, and it's just borderline crazy. I don't think many people are going to argue with that. And finally, Richie Gardner just easing off the pace a little. He's got a lead over Pets. Those two only separated by 30 seconds after two phases. Ollie Simon in second place overall. Desperate for that win. But this man, Marcus Holtgren, is the man who holds the cards at the moment. Well, a win is always a win. And especially when it's a, like a long three-day event. Like, you know, when you're playing ping, is ping pong. When you're a long ball, like, like 20 or 30 hits, you want to win that one. But just if you just serve and then smash out, it's not a big win. But when you keep doing it for a couple of days, like the same thing as an Ironman for me, it's, it's a long day. So the longer you do it, the, lo the more you struggle, the more important is the victory, of course. You're the first person to um, link ping pong and triathlon together. An interesting analogy, and Holtgren is staying with Ollie Simon. Simon knows that the way to win this is to completely destroy Holtgren. He's got to take him out of his comfort zone. He's got to make the Swede hit the wall, and he's trying his best to do it. Marcus Holtgren in the black with a white cap can afford to lose 30 seconds every mile of this marathon, and he'll still be the long course weekend winner. Here's a man who is certainly gambling. Richie Gardner, former Ultra Trail Commonwealth champion, trying to get himself on the podium. Gareth Petz has got a chance as well. Ollie Simon. He's only got 50 metres advantage over Hultgren. He needs considerably more than that. 13 minutes. It's over two miles. The gap's got to be at the end of this one. Holtgren looking determined. He's not exactly built for the marathon, a very powerful man indeed. I suspect over the years we'll see him slim down around the shoulders and the biceps just to improve his long distance results. Ollie Simon still moving nicely. Here's Jill Cliff. Now she's in second place in the women's event and trying to get away from Tracy Markham and so far doing a good job. Here is Tracy Markham. Certainly built for running, but again a reminder this is her first marathon. How's she going to cope? I don't think any of the girls that are in second or third are ahead of me, so I'm not racing them. It's a long day out, you've got to run your own race. Well, she needs to be a little bit wary because Michelle Parsons is taking some time out of her and Jill Cliff, who is in second place, is in front of her. So Tracy Markham, unaware of that at the moment. And although he pulled out of the race yesterday, Dominic Rowan Gates still taking part in the run. Funnily enough, actually, this year, not having the pressure yesterday and today, I've enjoyed it the most. Like being able to come and run a marathon and take the experience in without all the pressure. Now, here's a familiar figure when it comes to marathons. Leading the over 50s, Steve Edwards. And he's done a few himself. More than most. 735 today. All being well. And uh, another one on the total. Hopefully, keep going. Another one near the 1,000, which is the, uh, the big plan. They don't get any easier, though. Well, if he completes that, it would have taken him round the world and a few laps of Great Britain just for good measure. What an achievement. The race leaders into Pembroke, the halfway stage of the marathon. First mistake we've seen from Holtgren as he misses a drink, but he knows how important it is to get the fluid in. And the half marathon runners are ready to go. This is one of the great moments of the marathon, greeted by those going halfway and some very classy runners in this event as well. 
Ian Goff, you wouldn't put him in that bracket, but what a Herculean effort from him. He made his Welsh debut in 1998. He makes his marathon debut today. How are those legs feeling after the bike then? <laughs> you wait on the top and they'll be asking a question as well. I said this, it goes out. Uh, well, so far, so good. I'm sweating up the storm. It's quite sticky there, even though the weather's looking like it's going to rain. But uh, yeah, thank you for losing. So far, the legs are okay, but if you see me on this point on the way back, I might be a different, uh, a different answer. Yeah, so far, so good. Shaking those arms out once again and starting to get hot. Holtgren has not looked so comfortable since the halfway stage and still Ollie Simon is pushing on. And there's no doubt that whether you're in this one just to finish or whether you're in it to win it, this race is far from over. Welcome back to the Triathlon Guard Long Course Weekend. We're almost at the end of this three-day endurance event. The athletes have swum 2.4 miles, they've cycled 112 miles, and they're currently out on course running the Wales Marathon. But there's a real sting in the tail to this weekend with some nasty hills before this red carpet finish here in Tempe. Wearing number one, wanting to be number one, Ollie Simon coming up on the shoulder of Gareth Petz, who set off very hard in the marathon today. He's capable of 240. Doesn't look as though it's going to happen today. Ollie Simon trying to take 13 minutes out of Marcus Holtgren of Sweden. And here he comes, a man who's dedicated his life to triathlon over the last couple of years, training Hawaii, Australia and New Zealand to get away from the Swedish winter. And as he comes towards Manabir Castle, he knows that he has just about six miles and two significant hills to go. He knows that Oli Simon is still putting time into him. But remember, he has 13 minutes in hand. At the moment, he's about four minutes ten behind Oli Simon. Many reduced to a walk, not just on the uphills, on the downhills as well. That's where the legs can start to hurt. But Ian Goff has kept it trucking along all the way. Rugby's a lot easier than this stuff, though. No? Well, it's been a fantastic effort from Ian Goff. He's a long, long way off the pace of the leaders. Matthew Jones is going to be the first onto the red carpet, the 35-year-old from Sunderland. He did a 159 in the Great North Run. Not sure what was going on there. But he's about to win the Wales Marathon. His second big victory of the season, having won in Hull. Richie Gardner, second today. He's the first of the long course weekend athletes to cross the line. Has he done enough to go up into third place ahead of Mark Whitaker? He certainly won't beat this man, Ollie Simon. He won in 2010, he won in 11, he won in 14, he won in 15. But will he win in 2016? It's not looking likely, with Hulkgren only five minutes behind. But a fabulous effort from Ollie Simon. He's not happy. He desperately wanted win number five. Petz started fast and he paid the price. That could cost him his place on the podium. But the celebrations have started for Holtgren. It's been a brilliant weekend's competition from him. We saw him do a great triathlon in Lanzarote. 9.29 for the Ironman event there. This is a very different kettle of fish. But in all his interviews, it's been blatantly obvious that he wanted to win here in Tenby, and he's done just that. He's the long course weekend champion for 2016. 9.14.34, the combined time. Ollie Simon, the defending champion, demoted to second place, and Mark Whitaker, 34 minutes behind Hultgren in third place. Oh, that was beautiful. That was really, really nice. Just to hear the noise coming in here was sad. Uh, but you know, I, I heard that I was about five minutes after, but you know, you never know, so I had to push it all the way. No doubt about it, he won it on the bike. Ollie Simon won two of the three stages, but still he finishes second. And that's the fastest I've ever done that marathon. And, uh, 
I really pushed it quite hard all the way out to Pembroke and um, paid for it a bit on the way back, but luckily the wind was behind a bit and helped out. But yeah, it was really tough going. And to be on the podium with someone like Marcus, he's been the strongest over the three days, so fair play to him. Hurting but gracious in defeat, Ollie Simon. Here comes Lucy Gossage, full of running, having run the half marathon event. Oh, I love Tenby so much. It's from, yeah, just the, my favourite place in the world to race. I'm not exaggerating, it, it is my favourite place in the world. And I've been to a lot of cool places, so. <laughs> and here comes Michelle Parsons, who's running, has gone skyward since she was coached by Annie Emerson. 3.16.22 her time, she wins the Wales Marathon. Dominic Rowan Gates, they ran together for a long period, and here comes the event winner, it's Tracy Markham. She wasn't aware that she had faster runners ahead of her, but it doesn't matter. She had enough in hand after a brilliant bike ride yesterday. She's the new champion. And the women's title going to South Africa. Tracy Markham's time, 10.56.25. Only 10.43 ahead in the end. Remember, Cliff was 23 minutes behind at the start of the marathon. And what a run from Michelle Parsons. She catapults herself up into third place. It's been the most amazing weekend. Exceeded all expectations. It's been incredible. This is by far the, the toughest thing I've ever done. I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> Can't wait to come back next year. <laughs> it's just mind blowing. It's just amazing. You know, the crowds are brilliant, and today's just amazing. The support all around the route. Jill Cliff, second place. Hopefully, she'll be back to go one better next year. Here comes Ian Goff. What an effort from him. He didn't have Shane Williams to race against today. He didn't need it. It's turned out a great day and the crowds have all turned up and it's absolutely fantastic. You know, great fun and a huge achievement. But, you know, I never thought I was going to do a marathon, so I didn't even think this week I was going to do it until sort of about four or five days ago. So, yeah, brilliant. You know, it, it took a bit of a talking to myself in the, in the bedroom this morning in front of the mirror, just like, you know, come on, I've got to do it, let's, let's just have a go. And, you know, the enthusiasm out there, the people out there were absolutely fantastic. So everyone pulled each other along. I had some good chats along the way and, uh, you know, it dragged me through here and the, the reception, you know, all the way along was brilliant, but coming into Tenby was something else. Wonderful, like no other, it's amazing. Best in the world, love Wales. Fantastic. I'll be back for long course next year as well. From San Antonio, Texas. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. It's a, it's a... Once in a lifetime experience. I mean, it's nothing like it in the, in the United States. This is for sure uh, a bucket list item. Two foreign winners, hundreds of foreign competitors. The long course weekend goes from strength to strength. Well, Pembrokeshire and Tenby haven't let us down. Once again, the support has been unbeatable for all the athletes all weekend. Just look at the crowds now. They're congratulating not just the winners, but for every single person who's completed the long course weekend. It's time for these guys to relax, enjoy the celebrations, and we'll see you next year.